So I'm sure some of you have heard the song God on the Mountain, or maybe many of you have. But it refers to when everything is going good and how we're happy and, you know, everything's going our way mainly or the way we want. And then uh, talks about God is with us. But then when things change, and uh, then what do we do? You know, where are we when things go wrong, when things go bad? And so um, with that, I'm gonna share. I went to boarding school. I was sent at seven years old to be in the kindergarten in Stuart Indian Boarding School in Carson City, Nevada. I remember my parents and my grandmother talking about sending me because uh, the Indian kids in McDermott were really mean and would call me names. And I remember that conversation. And so I uh, was sent. I don't know their uh, their logic at that time, but I was a little kid, so I didn't have a say. And I remember being taken up to the tribal uh, agency where there was a big bus standing there and there were many people. These are just things I remember now, I don't, because I don't remember everything. And there were a lot of people, and today I don't know who they were, except my I was with my Aunt Ella, Ella George, she was, like six or seven years older than I was. She's my dad's youngest sister. And I remember uh, just uh, doing what my parents wanted me to do and I had this little tiny suitcase. I don't know what was in it. And uh, got on that bus and I remember it filled up. That's one thing I remember. I don't know who, who were there. And the next thing I remember was um, uh, that mountain after you go past Winnemucca and you're going towards uh, Emily. And I remember that mountain being filled uh, just at snow, snow capped mountain. I remember, remember thinking that it was huge. Don't ever remember going that way with my parents, but I must have at some point in time, because they told me stories of how they'd been to Reno. But that day, I remember that big mountain and it was looming, it was huge. And then the next thing I remember was getting off the bus in this place and it had huge rock buildings. All of them were rock, made of rock, stone, huge, they were big. And then the next thing I remember was these beds in this big building. There were beds lined up like in the way the hospital beds used to be in those days. Uh, because I remember I was in the hospital in Stuart too at one time. But everybody, all the beds were lined up like in a big area, like a big hallway. And um, I don't remember really that much from that year, but Judy Trejo, I was a drug and alcohol counselor with Albert Phoenix in in Pyramid Lake when you're in Nixon. And we went to Shures to do a presentation. And uh, that's when I ran into Judy Trejo. And I'd always remembered her as a ch little child because I used to go visit her at her grandma's. They lived uh, not too far from us when I was little. And I would watch her bead and I was just, I remember being so amazed at the beads, the colors of the beads, because nobody in my family did that. But, and I would just talk to her and she was older. But she told me, she was a teacher in Shures at that time. And we talked uh, for a while and she told me, I'm writing a book about Stuart Indian Boarding School and you're, you're gonna be in my book, she said. She said, I remember you 
when all the girls had to strip naked, she said they had to all strip naked and they were putting this stuff on all the girls' hair. And I don't remember lice in those days. I never, I never was acquainted with lice until 1998 or 1980, 80, 1988. 1988 was the first time I never, I never knew about lice. But they said they were washing our hair, putting kerosene or something in our hair to kill the lice. But she said, I remember you, Gloria, crying and screaming and you were covering your eyes and you were just screaming. And she said it was because of what you were taught growing up in your home. And I remember what we were taught, but I don't remember that incident. If she hadn't told me, I would have never known anything about it. But it was because my grandmother had taught me if you look upon a naked uh, private part, you're gonna go blind. So these people didn't know what uh, they were doing to me and I was seven years old. And I thought I was gonna go blind, obviously. And, um, but that's what she told me. She said, I'm writing a book. And I remember talking to her, she was at Uncle Orville's one time and I said, are you still working on your book? I hope you are. She said, well, right now I'm not and I just, really looked forward to her book, but uh, obviously she didn't uh, finish it. But if she hadn't told me that, I would have never known. I would have never known because uh, most of my life, my three years in Stuart are blank, okay? I have no memory. And they're just bits and pieces like, okay, so that was the first year. And then I went home for the summer and I remember always going by my grandmother and starting to speak Paiute. I don't know how I learned uh, English because only Paiute was spoken in the home growing up. And um, and I don't know how I learned English. I don't know if it was hard for me or if it was easy for me or what. I don't know, see? So I don't know how that affected me to be taught another language and not have anybody there to help me or to understand, I, it's a mystery, it's a mystery, because I don't remember. But I remember going home and starting to speak Paiute to my grandmother. As soon as I saw my grandmother, I'd start talking Paiute to her. And it was as if I never left home, because it's like we just connected and continued on. And then the next school year, it was another building. It wasn't that huge building. It's uh, the first building was at big huge building it was called the girls dorm little girls dorm where they have the powwows in front of now and so the second year i went that would be my first grade year uh we got moved over to this other dorm right next to it and uh, and we had rooms there and there were bunk beds in there and i remember the navajo girls the older girls had their looms in their room and they could do the their uh rug making they were allowed that and they were allowed to wear their their own clothing whereas we were us little girls were wearing them um, look like little dresses made out of uh, flower sacks because in those days they had little flowers on those flower sacks and that's what i always thought of it was look like a flower sack and the panties matched the dresses and uh, they were like bloomers, you know, big loose things. And so, um, but I remember that the second year. So that would be my first grade. I started there, kindergarten. And uh, this would be my second year, which would be my first grade. And then I remember learning to tap dance because I love dancing. And, I, and they took some of us girls uh, to learn tap dancing. And I don't know, uh, we were supposed to perform. I don't remember if we performed. I just remember learning it and practicing it. And uh, that is all I remember of my second year. Is that weird? It was weird, because out of a whole year, that's all I remember. I remember the, those Navajo kids having their own uh, it looked like a big giant Quonset hut. The Navajo kids were separate and they were older, but they got to speak their language. They got to, the Navajos got to keep their language. 
and we didn't. And so, uh, and they got to keep their cultural, you know, identity. They had their dresses and the, you know, the, um, the velvet teen tops and they, they dressed the way they did at home. And these were older, they were like teenagers. There were no Navajo kids my age, little. These were all mostly teenagers, older, older Navajo kids. They were all older. They didn't bring the little tiny kids like my age there. It, they were all like teens and older. So then uh, going home again, talking to my grandma again and, you know, talking Paiute to her as soon as I got home. It was like I never left. I never lost it. And I don't know what we talked about, but my grandma was my everything. She was my everything. She was the moon, the stars, the sun. She was awesome. She was an awesome, loving person. And even though I had kinky, curly hair and I was the darkest ever, she never said, you're not my granddaughter. Your dad isn't your dad. She never, ever said that to me. I was hers. I always remember her protecting me, like feeling protected and feeling safe with her. Then the third year I went back and I'm just telling you what all I remember. Third year I went back, that would be my second grade because it was kindergarten first and second. And then I remember a little more. There was, I remember getting there, they had like a watermelon bus in the streets close to the, um, there was a stand where they sold sodas and, um, you know, little condiments like that, sodas and chips and things like that. And, oh, let me go back a little bit to the first, back to the beginning of kindergarten. I remember one thing, I remember my parents sent me a quarter and a quarter could buy a soda and chips. And I remember I had it in my mouth and I was uh, skating there was a big tennis court in front of that first, uh, that little girl's dorm, that big, big dorm, right where they have the power. Now there was a big tennis court there. And we used to skate, uh, roller skate on that. And I remember roller skating and I hit a bump and I swallowed my quarter. I remember that, I swallowed my quarter. <laughs> I was devastated. No, I didn't look for it. <laughs> I was devastated because that was like, like probably five dollars <laughs> to me <laughs> in those days. Anyway, so that's the other thing I did remember and playing in the leaves. That was the other thing was playing in the leaves. We got to play in the leaves when we were raking the leaves because, you know, it has, we had a lot of trees there in Stewart and we, uh, I mainly remember playing because there were older kids that were raking the leaves and we used to jump up in there, jump in the pile of leaves and, and roll around in the leaves. So, okay, back to the third year. So then we were in that dorm, say you're facing, you're facing the little girl's dorm. So the first, that was the first year. Second year was the dorm right up to the left of it. And then the third year was the dorm kind of behind it. And um, so I was there the third year. And I got to learn to ride a two wheel bike there. I remember that. And love to climb trees. I've always loved to climb trees and me and some girls would sneak and climb the pine trees. I was telling my daughter and my grandson about it when you were there for the powwow. Or maybe we were really there for the Indian tacos. <laughs> but. I was telling him how the tree that we used to climb was gone. It, there's a parking lot or something behind there now. And we would we would sneak because we couldn't, we weren't allowed to climb the trees, but we'd sneak and climb those trees way up high. Pine trees are fun to climb because they have all those branches. 
and then we'd climb on the back of that first uh, the little girls door building and we'd walk along the the ledge it was real real uh we were just like mountain sheep <laughs> there were some of us that could do that and loved doing that so i learned to ride the bike that year so i was seven eight must have been nine nine ten and then i don't know who i got into cahoots with and they said they were going to run away here i am okay must be about nine years old where am i going to run i mean there were boys that did that earlier before and uh, uh there were there were their testimonies of how the boys jumped the train and went all the way to Alco, you know, from Owyhee. And, oh, I can't think of his name, uh, Harney. I was at his funeral and they read his, uh, his life in Stuart and how he got away and hid in the mountains after he left. Um, but anyway, so we tried to run away and we got caught. We didn't go very far. And, and I remember having to stay in that bed all weekend because we got caught and that was our punishment and just staying in bed. And then another memory I have of that year is uh, we had to make our beds real tight, real tight, like um, like they couldn't be loose the way they told us to make the bed. And I remember not making my bed correctly and the matron came and stripped it. Then she looked in my drawer and just emptied everything out of there just on the floor because we had to line it with a newspaper there was a certain way everything was done and uh everything was done a certain way and if it's not done Im Im immaculately the way they taught us and then our beds are destroyed and our and our drawers are emptied on the floor and i don't even know how much clothing i had i don't think i had that much but it was emptied on the floor and uh had to do uh, that bed again. And I remember that. I, I don't remember how long it took me to redo it or how many times I redid it. I just remember that was very traumatic for me. And then uh, another memory I have that year is, uh, and I always loved the bands practicing. They would march, the marching band would always go around the campus and us little girls would follow them and I love the marching band the drums and up to, to the, this day I love the drums I love the drums when people know how to play the drums right mm, 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 mm. I love I love the marching drum band drums marching band drums <laughs> but um, I love the drums and we would go follow the band around because normally they were practicing on weekends and then uh, I remember a lady named uh, Nevada, and I believe I met her in Fallon one time. She's older, she doesn't remember me though, but she was, uh, she worked in Stewart one time, and she was so nice to me, just really nice. And I remember her looking at my hands, and my hands were all cracked and dry, and she gave me some, um, she bought me some lotion, and she gave it to me. And I always remembered that kindness. She was very beautiful. She was a very beautiful Indian lady. And I do, she was older, way older when I ran into her in Fallon at the clinic. And I, when I found out her name, I talked to her and I asked her if she worked in, in Stewart a long time ago and she said she did. But she didn't remember me. And of course, you know, that's the way it usually is. The older people don't remember the kids. But the kids, they remember when they're treated right and treated good. And they remember the ones that didn't treat them right and didn't treat them good. So I remembered her and she's always such a nice lady and she was so beautiful, so beautiful, beautiful Indian lady. And so I remember that. And then I remember us polishing, uh, waxing the halls that year. We would, we would play, they let us play actually. They let us pull each other. Once the floors were waxed, they let us pull each other on, uh, whatever material, coats or whatever, to shine the floors up. And that was fun. And I remember discovering ice for the first time, that they had ice. And we used to, there was a couple of us that would sneak into the kitchen part of the dorm, because that 
that last storm, we, for some reason, I knew there was a kitchen and we sneak in there and get ice and eat ice. And, uh, cause we'd never seen it, you know, or I'd never seen it. And then, uh, there was a nice matron. She was a white lady, kind of obese. And she would read us stories before we went to bed. And that's the first time, first year I remember that. And I remember she had a certain odor, uh, perfume that she wore. And you know, up to today when I smell that, that kind of perfume, I always think of her because it's like a real old lady smell. And uh, I always think of that. I always think of her when it was like a, something an old lady would wear. <laughs> but I would always remember that about her, but she was really nice. She'd read us stories with all gather around her as girls that were in her dorm. And we'd all gather around her and she'd read us a story in the evening before we went to bed. Don't remember her name or anything. I do not know. I remember at school, the big wooden schoolhouse. I don't know where the bathroom was. Nobody told me where the bathroom was. And for three years, for two years, I must have never needed to use a bathroom while I was at school. Isn't that amazing? And uh, then the third year, I remember I needed to go and I waited and waited. I was so scared to ask a teacher. And when I did finally have the courage to ask her, I didn't know where the bathroom was in that schoolhouse. And I looked all over it. I could not, I went upstairs, downstairs. I could not find the bathroom. So I headed to the dorm. And I remember wetting my pants on the way. I couldn't hold it any longer. So is that weird that they didn't tell me, tell kids where the bathroom was? And I don't remember other kids needing to use the restroom either. And uh, so that was another memory. So I don't have that many memories. And the boys, I remember the boys were really mean to me. They they would call me Boogie, Boogie. I, and I, uh, I knew it was mean. They were being mean to me. And, uh, and, uh, but I want, you know, when you're, when you're at a boarding school that your parents aren't there, there's nobody to go home to and say, this is what I learned today, or this is how so-and-so was mean to me or nice to me, or so-and-so is my friend and the other one's a bully. Uh, there's nobody, there's nobody to go home to and tell because you don't have a home. A building is your home. A bunch of girls are your home. I mean, with you in that home. So you don't have anybody, you don't have a parent there. And so you become strong, you become a strong person. And, um, and then uh, Christmas, I remember writing uh, Santa for a doll, a life-size doll. It was a big doll, like tall as me, and I got it. I remember getting that big doll in this one lady, one girl that was a real big bully. She was a bully. She always bullied me and she bullied other girls. Uh, her name was um, Renelda. And I'll just say Jay, because if she sees this or somebody sees this, you'll tell her. She was very bully. She was mean to me. And she took that doll away and she said, that's mine. I asked for that. That is mine. So she took it away from me. And I didn't cry. I, that's one thing I don't ever remember doing in, in Stuart was crying. And yet I will never, I don't like people calling kids crybabies or, cause that is such a put down, but I never cried. I never ever remember crying. Oh, oh, wait, 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 I did, I did. It was when I got the letter from my mom saying my grandmother had passed away. I remember crying so hard. I was so heartbroken. And like, you know, you're a little kid, so you don't know why your parents can't come come get you. I remember my grandmother and them coming to visit me. The, I believe it was the second year I was there. They came to visit me, and they told me that my grandmother wanted to come visit me. And that was the only time. That was the second year but not the third year. She didn't come the third year. And I didn't know my grandmother was sick, of course. Who's gonna tell that to a little child? And so I remember crying and crying and my heart was so broken. And 
Um, and I believe my heart stayed broken for many, 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 many years. And so when I came home, and that's all I remember. I remember Thanksgiving um, dinners in the dining hall. I remember going up to the, oh, I, that's what else. I remember um, going to church, um, hearing a story about a man named Jesus, but it was just, it was just a story to me. He wasn't real. I didn't, uh, nobody uh, made it real to me. It was just a man, a story, like reading a storybook. And then with a sunrise service, I remember getting up really, really early and going up on this hill, like the whole school, everybody on that campus had to go up there. Uh, it was called, it, it was before the sun came up and, or as the sun was coming up and we'd have service there. And I didn't know what that was about really. They called it a sunrise service. And so, so, um, I remember I hated stuffing at that time, uh, turkey stuffing, and but today I love it. And uh, I remember basketball games that we got to go to, uh, some at different times, I remember that. And uh, I don't remember my Aunt Geraldine, um, Delia told me, my Aunt Delia told me that um, I seen Geraldine one time and I went running to her and talking to her in Paiute real loud. I don't remember that. I don't remember seeing Geraldine. I don't remember seeing my aunt once we got there. I don't remember seeing, and I don't even remember Thalia. And she, I seen those pictures from Stuart and she's standing right next to me. I do not remember that. Is that crazy or what? If that picture wasn't there, I wouldn't have known she was right there with me because uh, she was the same age as I was. And uh, and so um, coming home the third year, after the third year, um, my mom and dad stopped the bus in Orvada, the, the store owner, can't remember his name, he's really nice, him and his wife are really nice right there in Orvada. And they stopped the bus and I had wet my pants and I was so embarrassed. I had so, I was so embarrassed and nobody made a big deal out of it though. And uh, the store owner used to call me Curly Top. And I, I mean, I, I could see the, that couple, they were so nice and I always felt they were so rich because they would take vacations overseas, you know, to Europe and everything. And I always remembered, uh, I felt like they were really rich, but they would look at me like, uh, curiosity, the way they looked at me, and the wife would call me, hey, curly top, curly tops. And uh, it was like an endearing thing, though. She was she was really nice. But I'm sure they talked and talked like, where did this child come from, you know? <laughs> I mean, you just know these things. Even as a child, even as a child, well, after I became, uh, became born again, I asked my pastor, Mr. Hammond, if uh, you could be born with discerning of spirits, because there were things I used to know. And he said, yes, you can be born with that gift. So there were things I used to know about people, you know, like it was almost like I knew what they were thinking. And so, uh, so like I would talk to my grandmother as soon as I got home, I did that with my dad. And I remember they were he was working at Hozak Ranch there in Orvada and we were living in a, a trailer. And I was talking to my dad in Paiute, and uh, we were we were talking, and I must have said a word wrong, you know, and he kind of chuckled at me. He didn't make fun of me, but I was still raw, my heart, my broken heart, from losing my grandmother. And I remember thinking, now, how do you do this? How do you remember this? After not remembering anything else from boarding school for three years, how do you remember I thought, well, my grandma's gone now. My grandma wouldn't have laughed at me. And that's when zip, I never spoke Paiute again. My grandma wouldn't have laughed at me if she was alive, you know. 
And then, uh, I don't know if my dad noticed it, but later he just taught us, you know, like learn to speak English the best you can. Don't, don't speak a, a broken English. This is a white man's world now. It's not an Indian's world. And you have to learn to do things their way. And those are my dad's exact words in Paiute. He told me this. And, um, and I don't, you know, when he taught me things, I don't know if my siblings were around because I'm the eldest. I was the oldest. And my sister Louise was three years younger than me. And then Dee was two years younger than her. But I don't know if they were around when they taught. All I remember is taking in what my dad taught me. But then uh, when I was, I don't know how old I was when he said, I'm really sorry that I told you that because Harold Abel speaks really good English and he speaks, you know, in Paiute, he was saying, that he spoke very good English and that he spoke very good Paiute. And I'm really sorry that I told you not to speak Paiute anymore. And, uh, and so that's how my dad was. He was not too big to not apologize. He always apologized when he did something that was not right. That's the way he was. Anyway, so, uh, so all the trauma, I don't know. You know, our memories are in our DNA. Our the memories are in our um, bone marrow. And so I went back to Stewart in, before I came here to Idaho. And I went through walking around and asking God to uh, heal me of all my memories that I don't even remember that could affect me. You know, that could affect my walk with God. I said, I forgive. I forgive everybody and I forgive anything that happened to me because I want to walk with you with a pure heart and not have any, any blocks, you know, anything to stop me from being all that God wanted me to be. And, uh, and then later I found out later on in, in Earl Roberts in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a black lady prophesied over me and she was from New York City, did not know me from anybody and said, my grandmother sent me to boarding school because she wanted me to become a strong person. And that, I mean, the power of God was so strong in that living room when she was prophesying. It was the power of God. So there was a purpose. There was a purpose. My grandmother was like prophetic. She knew things. She she knew things of the future. She knew. And so I felt the devil took her life, you know, early. Anyway, so um, forgive. Let go. Let go of the past. Don't hold on to grudges. Don't hold on to unforgiveness. Because it only hurts you. It only hurts you. And God can get you through it anything you know he's the god of the mountain he is the god of the mountain and he's got me through so much and i just i love my grandmother so much and there was so uh uh it was like i went through healings 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 just when i thought i was healed of her death uh and i only had her for nine years only nine years of my life, but that's how she impacted me. My grandmother was my everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind. Like you've never known But when things change And you're down in the valley Don't lose faith For you're never alone For the God of the mountain 
is still caught in the valleys when things go wrong he'll make them right and the god in the good times is still god in the bad times oh the god of the day is still god of the night we talk of faith when we're up on the mountain but talk comes easy when life's at its best but in the valley of trials and temptations that's when faith is really put to the test for the God of the mountain is still God in the valleys. When things go wrong, he'll make them right. And the God in the good times is still God in the bad times. Oh, the God of the day is still God of the night. Amen. So life is easy when we're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But when things change and you're down in the valleys, don't lose faith for you're never alone. God's still with you no matter what. But that's when your faith is really tested. That's when your faith is really tested. See, my, my grandmother didn't know the hard times I was gonna go through. You know, I lost two kids in one year. What, who got me through that? God, my faith in God, my trust in God, my God knowing that he's there with me through the good times and through the bad times. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. So I thank God for b building my character, for taking me through the valleys and taking me through the good times, for taking me through, for taking me through to be an overcomer to be victorious in all things and to be free. Hallelujah. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you just from my heart. And I know it might not be just flowing, but this is what came from my heart today. So God bless you all. And Cilicia, you wanted me to sing that song. That song was for you because look at the hard times God got you through, the good times he's taking you through now. And you are a victorious, you're an overcomer, and all of you who have gone through hard times in your life, that song is for you. You've made it. You've made it with God, not by yourself, but God. We didn't know at the time God was with us. We felt all alone. We thought our families had abandoned us. We thought nobody cared for us, but God was right with us and like he is today. So maybe some of you feel all alone. You feel abandoned. Maybe your friend left you, your best friend turned against you. Maybe they talked about you behind your back and you heard about it, but, and you feel alone, but God is with you. He's your best friend. He's your father. He's your mother. He's your lover. He's everything. He is everything to you. So reach out to him and believe him and get a hold of him and don't let go. Read his word. Believe it when you read his word. Believe, 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 believe. He's got so many promises. Hallelujah. And I thank you and praise you for watching this video. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. You will be blessed. You will be blessed. You will grow. You will be grow and be all that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed.